Hey everyone, my name is Brad and I have logged into the name Investing Doc. Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about inflation and how it affects doctors and everyone practicing medicine. So follow along and let's see how big of a deal this might be or might not be. Some of y'all may have heard, but recently the headlines were that in January 2022, the inflation year over year was 7.5%. It's actually the consumer price index, which it tracks multiple different things, such as gasoline, food, healthcare costs. And while there's a little bit of criticism about how accurate that is or not, I think we can all agree that inflation is definitely much higher than we'd like it to be. But have you ever thought how much it affects you practicing medicine or the practice of medicine? So today I'd like to really go over that and talk about how it's going to affect you potentially in the future. Some people I think got it lulled into a sense of security when they saw the inflation numbers and said, well, maybe because inflation was highest because of automobiles, gasoline, and food, this isn't going to affect me. But I think that you probably would be wrong if you made that assumption. In year-over-year -year changes, what we have noticed is that employee salaries have gone really high. And I'll post a link to what our you know, expenses have been uh, past year. But you can see on the chart that clearly our largest expense is employee salary. Where we used to hire for about $15 an hour, maybe even $14 an hour for someone who had zero skills, maybe they were just uploading faxes or they were answering a phone and doing scheduling or just checking patients in. Now we're noticing that $20 in our city seems to be the going rate. And even at that, we have full benefits, three weeks paid time off, 401k match, we pay for health insurance, we're paying 20 plus dollars an hour. Literally the last two weeks, not a single person showed up to a job posting that we've had online. I think it's very telling how we've had a lot of people apply for it, but no one seems to answer the phone or even show up for any of the interviews. And maybe there's something on us and we'll have to look into that, but also goes to show that inflation is very real and affects your practice. So there's a couple of different subsets on how this affects your practice. The first is, let's just talk about the, the obvious. With inflation going up, let's say it goes up 7% year over year for three years. Compounded wise, that's almost 23% increase in inflation after three years. And our insurance contracts are usually tied on three years. So let's say that cost did go up 23%. Well, we'll throw out some like make believe numbers and we'll say that the average clinic brings in $100,000 you know, per location. And these are all just rough estimates and kind of made up numbers to make the math easy. Most clinics also have about 50% of their income goes towards overhead. So there we used to have $50,000 that was going towards overhead and then $50,000 that could go towards potentially, you know, paying yourself, paying, you know, taxes, whatever it may be. Previously, we would say that $50,000 is profit, but inflation went up 23%. So now it's going to cost you about $62,000 three years down the road for where that $50,000 used to basically cost you that amount. Now that inflation has gone up by about 23% or so over those three years, year over year, then you're going to be spending three years down the road about $62,000 where you were spending $50,000 previously, but your contracts are tied. You can't necessarily make any more money because you have an agreement with Aetna, Cigna, Blue Cross, whatever, that you're not necessarily going to make any more money than that fee that you had scheduled in there. So where previously you were bringing home $50,000, now you're bringing home about $38,000. You're bringing home that $38,000, but your purchasing power is about 23% less than what it was a couple of years ago. So effectively, you have almost a 40% drop in income with your buying power three years down the road compared to where it was previously. I know that I'm throwing out a lot of worst case scenarios, but I wanted to exemplify that, yes, the math is probably slightly off a little bit here, but you get the idea that inflation has the potential to be very bad for small practices, medical practices. It's one of the only industries that's inelastic. You go and buy a car. Hey, if, if Ford charges their distributors 10% more, they cost that, they, they put that 10% cost and pass that along to the, the customer. We can't do that here. We're stuck at whatever our insurance agreements rates are. So I think what we're going to see in the future is you're going to most likely see that those profits are going to get squeezed if this worst case scenario happens. And employee wages are going to be really interesting to figure out. What are we going to do with that going forward? Which segues into my next topic that I like to talk about for employee wages and that in order to stay relevant, we really had to look at how are we going to cut costs and cut costs effectively? And the only answer to that was outsourcing. Paying someone $50,000 a year just to answer a phone, although it provides a wonderful service to us, we had to look to smaller communities where we could pay them less. We even had to look to are there other companies overseas that can do some of these things for us for significantly less. And as we're finding those, 
we're not hiring people here as much as we used to or plan to, and we're outsourcing some of that labor to decrease the cost since our margins are pretty slim overall. Now, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is Medicare. Now, without getting too much on a a soapbox and a rant about Medicare, there's an advisory group that makes recommendations on how much, if any, the pay increase or decrease should be for the next year. And when I looked into this MedPAC, uh, as they're called, group, I realized half of them are physicians. And I thought it was very interesting that I actually got a pay decrease in 2022 compared to 2021, despite record inflation. And in January of 2022, they just recommended for the following year, 2023, zero pay increase across the board. And it really got me thinking, why would this group advocate for no pay increase with the highest inflation in 40 years? It turns out that this group is not a voted upon group. It's an it's a nominated group. And the gentleman who nominates these is this guy, Mr. Daddario. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but it is what it is. So this gentleman is basically putting whoever he wants in these positions and the chair, the head of the board, based on his own bio, says that he is very highly interested in low cost medicine, alternative payment structures. So it's very clear by this person's bio that they're all about decreasing pay and increasing kind of productivity, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But when you're basically loading the board with individuals who are all about low There's going to be a bias over time to not want to increase costs and basically just let inflation eat away at that percentage of the cost, which, of course, has a significant negative effect for physicians, especially since most physician contracts or clinics or hospital contracts are tied to Medicare at a certain percent rate, 110 percent, 90 percent Medicare, whatever they may be. Now, the AMA was quick to go online and denounce this. But honestly, besides a quick post saying that they denounced no pay increase for 2023, they've been totally silent which is a whole separate issue on why I think the AMA has their own issues amongst the physician community. We've also noted a double whammy in terms of payment. During the pandemic, we've had a lot of physicians that we've interviewed for another clinic that we're trying to open. And the difficult part with that is that it's really hard to compete with physicians who've done locums before, especially during the pandemic. Some of these physicians were making $300 plus an hour, to go work in the middle of nowhere. They made a lot of money. They got bonuses. They got all kinds of incentives to really work hard during the pandemic. And kudos to them. I mean, hey, if you were there saving lives or intubating people or you know doing whatever with COVID, very sick patients in the hospital, you deserve to make that money. I'm not downplaying that at all. What I am saying is that those individuals are now coming looking for steady work because they're tired of flying to five different states, working in the middle of the night, working 14 days in a row, extremely exhausted. They come here and they look at the salary that we can potentially offer, and it's very disappointing to those individuals. And you know, I think a lot of those individuals are realizing, hey, I could potentially do locums and make the same amount working nine days, 10 days a month compared to 20 days in the clinic. And it's a really hard sell to get people to want to go into the clinic right now especially those who've done locums before. So I think this leads me to where the heck is medicine going in the future? One, I really don't think inflation is going to stay at seven to seven and a half percent for the next three years going forward. My second prediction is that we'll see more and more subscription plans as more cost conscious individuals come out there. HMO plans are rising. uh, You know, we're getting squeezed income wise. I think that you'll either see a dichotomy of care, basically a two tiered system or to continue that one tier system, you're going to have a subscription plan. And there's already a lot of clinics that are doing this. My next prediction of where things are headed is outsourcing of labor, paying someone $50,000 a year to answer the phone and simply, you know, put someone on the schedule. It's not feasible. And I think that we're going to find that those individuals are going to get outsourced to either rural America, or they're going to be outsourced to less affluent countries. The next prediction that I'll have is that EMRs, electronic medical records, it has all been about simplification, um, ease of use for physicians, and maybe some added on features such as, you know, uh, scheduling and things like that. I really think that the next gold rush in EMRs, electronic medical records, is going to be automation. The medical record that can say, hey, I can take 20% of your staffing costs and I can get rid of them by automating all of this stuff for you. I think that's going to be the biggest thing that clinics and practices are going to look for going forward. Another interesting prediction is that we'll continue to see more and more telemedicine. I think we started to see a little bit of a pullback, but I think that as costs continue to go higher, I think we'll continue to see telemedicine continue to expand. 
And one of the most interesting expansions that I've seen lately is an orthopedic group that's doing telemedicine initial evaluations. I saw a commercial on TV that was basically saying, let's do an evaluation via video chat about your elbow pain. I think that's something that may need a physical exam, but I'm not an orthopedic physician. So I think it's going to be interesting, but we'll see this drive into telemedicine even more so than we're seeing today. The final prediction that I'll have is that mid-level or APPs, uh, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, going to become more and more prevalent. And in order to cut costs, it's going to be more and more difficult to be able to see a physician um, short of a surgical specialist. For example, when I refer a patient now for colonoscopy or just a simple stress test, a lot of times they don't even see the cardiologist or the GI doctor anymore. They just see the advanced practitioner. They see the nurse practitioner, the PA, they set them up for the colonoscopy, GI doc comes in and does it. And I think that a lot of trends that we're going to see is towards efficiency. So let me know what you guys think and uh, have a good day. Thanks for following along. Consider subscribing to the channel.